afternoon, everyone. My name is Shami, and I'm here with Professor Andrzej Machkiewicz, and he's actually one of our professors here at Poznan University Medical Sciences. He's here to talk a little bit about his research with his team on the COVID vaccine uh, and some other things as well. So happy to have you. Would you like to introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about you. Uh, yes, good morning. Uh, I am professor of medicine. Uh, I am uh, uh, board certified in uh, medical oncology, internal medicine, path pathology, uh, laboratory diagnostics, and I'm uh, in general uh, immunologist. Uh, I used to be president of Polish Society for Clinical and uh, um, Basic uh, immunology and uh, as mentioned uh, I'm chairing the uh, medical biotechnology here and also uh, uh, department of cancer diagnostics and uh, immunology in the greater Poland uh, cancer center this is a regional regional cancer center perfect well, thank you so much for taking time to speak with us and everybody else who's watching. Um, we you. want to take a really quick step aside and talk about the basics of vaccines right before we jump into your research so everyone's on board. And so with that being said, I just wanted to ask, um, basically, what is a vaccine and how does it work? Well, vaccines are the major achievement of our, our civilization. It... Uh, combated uh, and freed us from uh, various pathogens like bacteria, viruses, and uh, otherwise uh, our uh, society population wouldn't uh, wouldn't survive. So now we are dealing with the uh, next kind of generation of so-called corona. Um, viruses. So, uh, how it works? First, we we want to uh, teach our body how to uh, combat the invader. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, this is the uh, virus. So uh, we can kill the virus at some called adjuvants in the past we're dealing with aluminium and this stuff now it's uh, it's past so now we have uh, new modern biological adjuvants which uh, role is to irritate our uh, immune system and help help it to build uh, the barrier uh, for the viruses to to get us Six, uh, sick. I mean, viruses or, or other pathogens like bacteria and, um, and so on. So uh, uh, after such exposure, our uh, body, our defense system, uh, which is named uh, immunological system, will uh, recognize the uh, pathogen and then we'll remember it by uh, having so-called uh, memory cells. And uh, these cells go asleep and wait. And in a case with a contact with the virus or other pathogen, they wake up and they already know this is the danger or enemy and they will go and try to kill them before uh, they uh, generate the disease, like uh, like COVID, um, um, for example. And this is the rule uh, for for all the uh, vaccines which are which are uh, created um, in the world. Of course, due to the progress in the technology and uh, our understanding or better understanding how these uh, um, defense mechanisms work uh, we are not using uh, um, as a standard the killed pathogens however such a uh, covid vaccine 
in some of them is also uh, also use the same the same uh, strategy. So there are various types of uh, of vaccines, depending, uh, for example, on the virus. Virus by by uh, by itself will not uh, will not multiply will not grow uh, anywhere. It it needs a human being or animal to invade it and then multiply, and very very often uh, it kills uh, it kills the uh, the target. So, uh, mm, since uh, some of the diseases like uh, COVID are not curable yet, there is no, uh, no cure, uh, the way to uh, protect the society is to generate uh, uh, vaccines. Very good. Well, thank you for that explanation. I think people will really appreciate that, um, especially as we go into this quick discussion. So I'm going to change gears a little bit. Uh, I know previously your team actually worked on a vaccine for melanoma. Did you want to share a little bit about that? Yes, for 30 years we are working on so-called um, uh, therapeutic uh, cancer vaccines. Mm -hmm. uh, and we were one, uh, one of the pioneers in the, uh, in the world because our uh, therapeutic vaccines are based uh, on uh, genetically modified tumor cells. And this, this kind of the procedure is referred to as gene therapy. So we were one of the first teams uh, who uh, gave uh, these vaccines to melanoma pa uh, patients mm -hmm. and uh, continue it until now. So some of our patients they survived more than 20, 20 years having uh, a very progressed uh, disease. And during these uh, studies, we, uh, we had a chance to do some research on the mechanisms generated by these vaccines in, uh, in patients, uh, because uh, some of them uh, are tumor-free, uh, tumor and we can uh, we can uh, just uh, separate this uh, mechanism uh, uh, induced by vaccine from the mechanism induced by by the tumor itself and uh, going in this in this direction i realized that um, our our technology might be suitable for this um, for this virus however uh, with the virus this is not therapeutic uh, vaccine rather than prophylactic vaccine however the uh, some of the mechanisms are shared in response to invasion of the tumor uh, compared to invasion uh, by the by the virus and as you, as you probably heard, the most people are talking about antibodies. So uh, indeed, this is a very important part of, of the, our defense system, especially after the uh, vaccination, when the uh, people are exposed to the, uh, to the virus and it in, uh, invades the body, uh, the specific antibodies recognizing this uh, uh, virus are generated and uh, are supposed uh, to eliminate the virus and prevent the uh, development of the of the disease however the system our uh, defense system is very uh, is very complex complicated and to some extent uh, still uh, still unknown so um, there are patients who uh, develop the covid however they have no antibodies and the question is what's what is the mechanism fighting with uh, with them because uh, they develop uh, so-called mild type 
of, um, of the disease. So this is not a deadly part, but, uh, but heavy disease. But I, maybe, not, maybe not heavy, but, but still, uh, still an invasive disease. And in these patients, uh, people observed that they have no antibodies, but they, uh, they are protected by a different system, so-called cellular system, which is based on uh, specially trained uh, cells with, uh, with kill the virus or the cells where the virus is sitting in. So uh, this is a part of uh, the mechanism which is generated by our cancer vaccines. So uh, we believe that combining the antibodies and, uh, and the cellular uh, responses, our vaccine may be more efficient than those vaccines which mostly uh, generate uh, antibodies. But of course, that needs to be uh, proven uh, in the real, real life, not only in, uh, in laboratory. Okay, well, very exciting. So on that note, with your team's progress on the COVID vaccine, did you want to try and elaborate on what stage you are at in your research? I know I read something really exciting saying you might be working on mice or humans soon. Yes, we're um, constructing or we have constructed uh, two types of vaccines. One which, uh, which is a mice vaccine, uh, uh, which is kind of um, um, part of the experimental model. And the other one is the human vaccine. I cannot dis uh, disclose too, too much information because we are still working on it and we, we have to uh, file, file the patent because we, we disclose the details because the, these are the roles, rules in a, in a science and, a, and a for the business eventually. So, uh, so far our work was based on the uh, genetic engineering and cell engineering. And we have prototypes of both vaccines, uh, mice and human. And uh, next, next week, we will be immunizing or giving the uh, vaccine to mice and uh, observe what kind of the mechanisms, defense mechanisms, this, this mice develop. Mice maybe is not the best, uh, the best model for this particular uh, disease and the virus because uh, mice cells will not get infected uh, with the virus because they are a little bit different than humans. Mm -hmm. However, they will generate the defense mechanism uh, anyway with a, with a contact uh, uh, with the with the virus. So uh, mm, our goal is to then. Uh, uh, transfer the, all those uh, informations which we learned in mice to people. However, we are still um, planning to uh, to look at uh, already in uh, in patients who already developed uh, COVID to to see uh, if these mechanisms are really the same or similar to those which we uh, develop uh, with the cancer vaccines. Indeed, there are some published papers uh, showing that we are right. However, we, uh, we need to or we want to uh, confirm it uh, in, uh, in our situation. Absolutely. Experimental data. Yeah, sure. Well, very cool. Well, is there anything else that you would like to share with everybody who's watching in regards to the research you guys are doing? Our technology uh, as I mentioned, uh, technology for the uh, COVID vaccine is based on uh, our cancer vaccine. So we also have the manufacturing uh, facility, which is quite um, complicated compared to, to others, that uh, the whole process is carried out 
in um, aseptic means sterile conditions. Mm -hmm. So there is a, there is a chain of so-called clean rooms, um, especially prepared for it, and these cells are are grown because this is a cellular vaccine. So the cells are needed to to carry the uh, artificial virus, and uh, we have permissions from regulatory authorities to to develop vaccines, genetic vaccines. Uh, however, these were cancer vaccines, and now we are uh, switching to or adapting the system to to these vaccines. So we are we are armed and prepared. Of course, we cannot. Um, compete with huge uh, pharma companies, which uh, which are uh, generating uh, zillions of vaccines. However, uh, we believe that uh, our vaccine will will survive and find its place on the market. Perfect, and that's really important. Just because I know in your article you mentioned the hard truth that. If a country develops a vaccine, they're going to take care of their people first. So it's better if we're all working on this together rather than just one person and waiting. So. Yeah, look, look, look uh, what's, what's happening with this influenza vaccine. Yes. There are zillions in the world, however, not available. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, and the same, and I'm, I'm getting some uh, uh, contacts and letters from Brazil, from, Brazil, from uh, Colombia, and they want to collaborate with us. Mm -hmm and uh, also help, uh, maybe also financially, however, help with distribution in the countries and, uh, and, and everything. So that, this, is, this is a real threat, this disease. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking time to speak with us. Yeah, my pleasure. I really appreciate it, and I'm sure everybody else does as well. Mm -hmm.